Hello, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to see how to create the honey liquid simulation. So this is a model which I'm going to use for this simulation. So this is a sphere I'm going to use for generating the particles. So now in order to generate the particles, we need to select this and we need to go to this effects and bifrost liquid. So we need to select the sphere and select this option like liquid. So select this and now we will click on this play. So see now it has been created the particles, but it is creating only for one time. So we need to generate the particles continuously. So in order to do that, uh, we need to go to this outliner first. So here we can select this. There is an option like Bifrost emitter props. So select this and in the attribute editor, we need to enable this option called continuous emission. So we need to select this option and now we will see this. So now the particles are generating continuously. So just I will move it a little bit in the up direction. So I will select this peer and just I will move it. So if you click on this play, so now it has been generated the particles. So now we need to create the collision for this particle. So whenever we click on this play, so these particles are not colliding with these objects here. So in order to create the collisions, uh, first we need to select these two objects and later we need to select this liquid. And now we need to go to this bifrost fluid and there is an option called collider. So select this. And now whenever we click on this play. So now see it is creating the collision for this objects here. So now what the thing is, uh, if you want to increase the number of particles, uh, what we do is like, suppose if you go to this liquid properties, bifrost liquid properties, and here you can see there is an option like master voxel size. So let's say I will give the value to like three or something. So three. So now if I click on this play, so now it is going to generate more particles. But what the thing is now it is acting like an water. So we need to add the viscosity for this thing because as we are creating the honey, honey will have a lot more viscosity when compared to the water. So in order to increase the viscosity, so in the bifrost liquid properties, if you come down, you can see there is an option like viscosity. So here you can give the value. Let's say if I give the value to 600. So first I will go to the first frame and just I will give the value to like 600. And now we will click on this play. So now you can see it is more likely acting like an honey uh, liquid simulation but we are not able to see properly. So what the thing is, I will enable the meshing for these uh, particles. And also suppose if you want to create the catch for this. So before creating the catch, I will create some sort of animation so that the honey will randomly from, fall from one direction to another direction. So in order to do that, just I will create the animation for this sphere. So just we'll go to the top view. Let's say I will start from uh, this position. And just I will press S to create the animation. Let's say after like 90 frames, just I will move up to here and press S. And after like 180 frames, let's say just I will place up to here and press S. So now we got this animation. So just so this is a basic animation which I'm going to create. So now what the thing is, uh, if you want to like uh, create the catch for these particles. So let's say if I go to the perspective view. Now if you want to create the catch for these particles. So I will select this uh, liquid and we need to go to this bifrost and there is an option called compute catch to disk here. And also before that, I want to add a little bit of turbulence to this liquid. So in order to add the turbulence, we can click on this option called motion field. So click on this motion field and here you can give the turbulence and just remove this direction and we can increase the magnitude here. And also in the turbulence noise, we can increase the magnitude to like fire something uh, just like speed and frequency. It's up to you what kind of simulation you want to create. So by adding the turbulence, we will get the random liquid uh, simulation here. And now what the thing is just I want to uh, create the catch for this uh, liquid here. So if I select this liquid. And now in order to create the cache, we need to go to this bifrost and there is an option called like compute and cache to disk. So click on this. So it will start creating the cache for this. So I will come back soon. And now the cache has been completed. So if I go to the first frame and if I click on this play, 
So now the animation will play a little bit faster. See? So we got this nice simulation. Now what the thing is, uh, we need to convert this into mesh. So in order to create the mesh for this, uh, we need to select this liquid and here we need to go to this liquid shape uh, tab here. So if you come down, you can see there is an option like bifrost meshing. So we need to enable this. So click on this. Now it will create the bifrost meshing. And what the thing is, we need to give the material for this thing. So if I select this mesh, so now in order to give the material, just we can right click assign new material and go to this or null and just we need to select this a standard surface so after creating this uh, here we have some presets uh, so if i go to this presets and you can see there is an option like honey so just i will replace with uh, 100 percent and click on this now we got this honey uh, color and also i will give the color for this uh, ball so right click assign new selection assign new material or null a standard surface just will give the chocolate kind of uh, color so let's say just will give some sort of like brownish color to this just little bit of dark and also we'll give the material for this so we will give the chrome uh, material for this thing so right click assign new material so or not a standard surface and here we can uh, go to the presets uh, just we can give it like an chrome so i can replace with the chrome and also just i don't want uh, like uh, i want to increase the roughness because i don't want that much of reflection see now if i render this so let's say just i will set the angle and also i will create the camera for this so in order to create the camera just we need to go to create camera so camera just go to the camera view so panels perspective camera so now we are in the camera view so just uh, let's say just i will select up to this thing and we will create the light so just i will go to the lights create sky dome and now first we'll render this and say we got this nice uh, render, but still we have to improve. Uh, we will add some background to this thing. So in order to add the background for this, uh, we can go to this color. We have to select this sky dome and go to this color and just uh, go to the file and browse the HDRI. So HDRI you can download from the poly heaven. So I will put the link in the description. So I'm going to use this HDRI. So select this and click on open. And now we will see this and render. So see, we got this nice uh, simulation, but the thing is just I will match this background. So just uh, it will, uh, I will make it look like it is placed on the table. So just I will rotate this uh, background. So select this, just you can rotate this properly. Okay. And now we will see this. So see, we got this nice render. Now what the thing is the background is reflecting on this chocolate. So we need to increase the roughness for this thing. So like if I select this ball, so select this chocolate bar. And if I go to the material, uh, you can see there is an option like roughness. So I'm going to increase the roughness for this. And also I'm going to increase the roughness for this uh, material too. So just we can increase more. And now we'll see this, okay. So now we got this nice and also what the thing is we'll create the shadows for this table so that it will be look more natural. So now in order to create the shadows first we need to go to the perspective. Let us go to the perspective and now what the thing is just I will create the plane for this. So just create the plane and now what the thing is just we need to apply the shadow mat for this plane here because while in rendering I don't want to see the plane just I want to see the shadows which is falling onto this thing here so like right click assign new material and in the Arnold we need to apply this a shadow mat so that what the thing is in the final render we're not able to see the plane but the shadows which is going to fall on this plane will be rendered and also like uh, i will create the directional light uh, for this so if i go to the camera view so we need to create the shadows uh, on particular direction let's say i want to create the shadows on this direction here so in order to create the directional light, just we need to go to uh, like create lights. I will create this directional light and just I will uh, 
make this direction towards this direction here in this way. Okay, so just I will put out to this direction so that, and also if you want to increase the intensity, just I will increase the intensity. And now other thing is if you want to increase the quality of this thing, we need to uh, increase the uh, master voxel size here. It means like if I go to the liquid and if I go to the liquid shape, here you can see there is an option like point size. We can uh, decrease the point size. And also if I go to this liquid properties, here you can see there is an option like master voxel size. You can uh, increase this thing. But for time being, uh, let it be like a 0 0.3. So if you want to create more quality, then we can use this thing here. Like we can give it to like 0 0.2 or something. So let it be like a 3. And now we'll see this, how it will render. And see, now we got this nice shadows on this table so that it will look more natural. And what the thing is here, uh, we are getting this noise. So in order to avoid the noise, uh, if you go to the render settings, and here you can see there is an option like Ornal Renderer. Here we need to enable the like adaptive sampling. So if you enable this, we will avoid this like noise here. And also according to the value, it will take the render time. Means like it depends on your system processor. So suppose if I give the value to 20, so it depends on your system, uh, system configuration, it will take time. So let's see, suppose uh, before and after. So I will save this for keep image render view so that it will be saved. And now we will enable this adapt to sampling. So let it be like in 20 and now we will see this. And here I have rendered only the particular region and you can see before adapt to sampling, there were a lot of noise here. And after enabling the adapt to sampling, there is no noise here. So in this way, we can increase the quality by using this adapt to sampling option in the render settings here. And now the thing is, if you want to export it like a sequence, we need to go to this common and we need to select the format uh, where you in which you want to save. So let's say if I want to save it in JPEG, you can save and you can give the name like Pony Simulation. And also here uh, you need to select this option like name underscore hash dot ext because as it has been default selected like a single frame. So here we need to select name underscore hash dot ext. And I will give the frame padding to like three because as we are rendering only like 200 frames. So let it be like an uh, frame padding three. And here we can select the range. So let's say if I want to render up to like 200 frames, then you can uh, select this option like one to 200 frames. And also the renderable camera, we need to select the camera. And also here we need to select the quality. So let's say if you want to render in full HD, then you can select this full HD here. And also adapt to sampling depends on your system configuration. You have to give the value. So suppose if a system configuration is low, then we need to decrease the value here. So let's say you can give the value to like five or something. It depends on your situation. So let it be like an 20. And that's it in the render settings here. And now if you want to render this, we need to go to render and render here. There is an option like render sequence. So we need to select this box and we need to select the camera and we need to select the location where you want to save. So look, suppose if I want to save it in some particular location. So here I will select this uh, folder and you can create this uh, folder here. So like render something and just you can select this and click on select. So after selecting, just we need to click on this uh, render sequence and close. So for timing, I will not going to render, just I will close it. So in this way, we can create this uh, liquid kind of simulation like a thick liquid. So that's it for this tutorial. See you in the next video.